Sunday the 2nd of February 2014. Metropolis Studios in London. The Powerhouse. The old generating station from London's trams. It's the end of our first week of shooting Set Fire to the Stars and Griff Reese, our composer, is here recording strings for the soundtrack. Unusually, the music has been written already. Although we are so early on in the production of the film, this is a window of opportunity that had to be taken, as Griff will soon be off promoting his own film and album, American Interior. He has had to pre-compose the music for the film before we'd even shot a frame. Uh, Andy got that, and Colin Jones talked to me at length about what the film was about for them, you know, and they they took me quite carefully through the script and they were very specific in what music they needed and, and where and, and so it was a real easy process to digest it, you know, because they, they made it real easy for me. I've seen footage from the first three days and I was, I was quite amazed at, at how Colin Jones has, has become the Lord Thomas. Dylan! Dylan! Christ, don't do this to me, Dylan. Adding the strings is the final section of recording the soundtrack and for this, Griff has brought on board Griff Aparwell to arrange and help conduct where necessary. At the end of the session, the two Griffs and the musicians have time to check back the day's work and make any adjustments that might be needed. It sounds fantastic, so when you get tired we can just drop in the bits you don't like. Uh, um, but, yeah, great. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> now, all the string arrangements are recorded and can be mixed before being sent to the film's editor, Mike Jones. And this is how one of the tracks looked and sounded in the completed feature film, Set Fire to the Stars. It's a win-win situation for me.